Welcome into 4th and 5. I'm your host, DJ Williams, and I have to just start with one of the most upsetting things I have seen all year. And I know it's going to seem like I'm calling people out, and the reason it may seem like that is because I am. You know, I'm a former player. I've been in the situation before, and I know some things that are acceptable and some that are not. Uh, let's go ahead and take a look. Yeah, this is right after the game. Teams uh, going across the field. And, hey, I'm all about sportsmanship. No matter what, go across, shake the hand. But demeanor is something I really like to look at. And when you're looking at your team captain right here, and this is a guy that I loved all year, but this is one where I would ask KJ, take a look at this and you tell me what you see. Do you see a guy that is upset that his team just lost on their own home field 48-10? to 10? a position to where the backup needs to come in and relieve you as the starting uh, quarterback. You know, you got a lot of guys counting on you, a lot of guys that you made a promise to when they put that C on your chest that you were going to give everything you had each and every week. So you would assume losing 48 to 10, there would be come some kind of sense of being upset. I just don't see it. And uh, I don't think anyone who was watching this, KJ included, you know, would say, yeah, this is kind of a, not a bad look well, because it is a bad look and uh just the smiles you know the embrace with q freeze you know you got your homeboys and i get you know the, it's you're, you're gonna know people on the other team i get that but i i just i've been around competitors and when you lose in the fashion that the razorbacks did there's nothing about it that would make you want to smile after that game shake your hand get back to the locker room take about 10 15 minutes to process what has happened try to figure out these emotions and then just try to figure out how to get better it was just a sense and this just isn't kj i looked uh, on that field at a lot of people i saw some players that were obviously upset and then i saw a a large amount that are just laughing clapping hand i'm just i'm trying to figure out what in the world is going on uh, with this football program and i hate to say that cuz I don't want to point blame at coaches or athletic directors, the, the training staff, anything. This is just a competitor thing. This has nothing to do with anyone else but yourself as a player. And sometimes it's good to reflect and look at yourself when you see this, you know. And so if this podcast somewhat finds its way into KJ's lap. KJ, this ain't me picking at you, uh, trying to dog you in any manner, but, you know, People who have been in the game, uh, myself, and now you're in it right now, it's sometimes good to kind of look at the tape and then ask yourself, what does this really look like? And it just looks like someone who doesn't care that they just lost 48 to 10. There's no way around it. And so hopefully, if that does come back across your lap, take this, use it as fuel, and uh, make sure something like that never happens again. And so that being said, there's still a lot of tape to kind of get into. A uh, very disappointing loss for the Razorbacks. And yeah, I know I started off hot, but I get it. A lot of Razorback fans are hot. A lot of people throwing in the towel. And I can see why after one like that. Still two games left. Things they need to work on. Things that continue to be an issue. I saw a lot of firsts uh, against that Auburn game. And I'm going to start with the defensive side of the ball. This is the first time I felt like the defense uh, kind of came out and not necessarily locked in and ready to play and make the big plays that they've been making, I would say, for the better part of the year. Yes, there are a couple things that I believe Florida saw and exposed on tape. And I also think uh, Auburn saw the same things. But the effort and the lack of will, uh, I really haven't seen pop up on tape as being an issue for the Razorbacks. But take a look at the first drive. Uh, just mental mistakes. Uh, third and eight right here. And one of our leading tacklers, on the defense just just jumps off jumps off sides um and put your and you had covered down the field this would have ended up being fourth and eight auburn brings their field goal team on but you give them another opportunity just mentally not locked in you know and then you get to another situation third and three the perfect play is called up and yes i i know nudie loves to make huge plays you know but sometimes you just have to make sure you stick to your assignment he shouldn't have jumped at this pump date. He need to have a little bit more situational awareness. Uh, it should have been a sack. It would have ended up being around fourth and seven. They would have settled for a field goal, ends up picking up the first down. And then you get to this right here once again, uh, a good play call by Auburn. I'll give them that. But still shouldn't have been a touchdown. You can see kind of a poor angle here, not flying downhill, not the 
best attempt at a tackle. And this is from a, a guy who's proven that he can make these plays. This is the only reason I'm having a problem with it. Then you have a DB back here who's made plays all year long, who can step up, um, just leading with the shoulder, no attempt to wrap up at all, understanding it's close to the goal line. Technique needs to be, needs to be flawless and uh, just kind of gets ran over right here. And I'm calling these guys out because I know they're better than this. And I know when they see tape, they should be saying the same thing. But, you know, you're, you're, you dig yourself in a hole in this game. And y'all can see it happening very quick. And I think at the point when we thought all was starting to go completely downhill, um, some momentum happened. Take a look at this play. Yeah, we get an interception. A great read on the ball. The whole crowd starts erupting. When you're down 21-0 and the whole crowd erupts, that lets the team know, hey, we're still in this with y'all. Let's do this. And so when the offense come on the field after that interception, this is where you would expect momentum to pick up and take over. And this is, once again, what I saw on film, just the lack of want to. And where was that edge against Florida that did not carry over to this mentality of, like, let's fight, let's get this done? I think you had a little bit of a team who doesn't know how to handle success. Yeah, I mean, we all go back to those videos, just cheer them. Yeah, yeah. And then uh, probably rode that wave uh, way too long and thought that was going to carry over into Auburn. You're just going to pick it up. It don't work like that in this league. You got to end that celebration as soon as you hop on that plane, and then it's back to work. You can tell that's a lesson learned and at least trying to figure out how to deal with success. So you pick up after that interception, all the momentum going, the crowd is back into it. And then you put this on display, the, the drive after this. This is the drive where you take your shot and make something happen. And it starts up front, just poor technique, uh, complete embarrassment. Uh, I don't know why you're taking this zone step to the left. You can see this is completely wide open. Your only pass pro responsibility is this guy right in front of you. you, you the pad level is you're, you're leaning too far, lunging into this block. Defensive tackle just makes easy work of this. You literally made it easy for him and give up a sack right here. And then you get to the second down, uh, this read option play. So I'm not really sure exactly who they're reading. I would assume it's going to be the guy I'm pointing out. So when you get to these read option plays, you have to leave one man unblocked. That's how you kind of get advantage in the blocking scheme. And the reason you leave him unblocked, you then allow the quarterback to read this guy. And if that guy goes for the ball handler, then you pull it and run as the quarterback. But if this guy is staying down and making sure he's keeping the quarterback honest, then you hand it off to the running back. Very easy. So you can see right here as I press pause, KJ's looking right at him. There's no denying that. And you can tell by the angle of this backer, he is completely honed on to the running back. This one, KJ should have pulled it. Easy, clear as day. But he hands it off. You know, puts the running back in a very tough situation to try to at least miss or make a make a guy miss to try to get back to the line of scrimmage. Uh, just a poor decision by KJ right here. That's second down. And then you get to third down. And uh, still, offensive line, sometimes I'm so curious about what are you looking at. Um, pass protection, inside out, A-gaps, all right? I get you have people moving around. You don't know if this guy's rushing or not, but you got to protect inside out uh you can see this guy just screaming through the a gap and completely unblocked you can see your left tackle left guard looking at each other like oh, oh, oh who, whose man is this once again just a complete lapse in pass protection that's shown up on film all season long and i know you're going to ask me dj why does it keep happening are the coaches not telling them yes the coaches are telling them and it just seems to me if it gets to a point why these guys are still on the field, it's just they don't have any other option. Now, they did try to shift, shift some things out. I saw a couple of guys on the offensive line at the tackle position I haven't seen start before or get a lot of playing time. So they're trying to find someone who can at least know what they're doing. And then you get into a situation to where you get these guys on the field. Physically, they're just not able to get it done. Perfect example right here. You can see the pass protection. Yeah, you, you're blocking up the right guys, but. When you get driven like that into the backfield, and you get jumped over and still give up a sack. That's where the kind of lack of talent goes. So when you see stuff like this, I know it's hard to wrap your mind around how in year four is it still that bad? 
And I would love to have the perfect answer for you. I just have no idea. The biggest talk all week long I've seen on social media has just been about this NIL money. And uh, or we just need to ramp it up a little bit and go get these guys. Or the NIL money is just allowing these guys to kind of be a little bit comfortable and not have that edge of trying to perform each and every week. So then you can go get that money in the next level in the NFL. Uh, Man, it's a mess. And uh, I would like to see something changed. Now, I'm a big believer in these guys being able to make money off their likeness and not let other people make money off their likeness and not see anything from it. I know the argument. They're get, they're getting scholarship. They're getting their school paid for. All those things are true. But when you look at the amount of money that these programs and these players bring in to this university and how much money is made off of it, how much money these SEC contracts for TV is bringing in, and you got all these other people making, you, you have no idea. It's a billion-dollar industry. And to slap a scholarship on it, some would say that should be enough. I do think they deserve a little bit more. How do you switch this up to where these players don't take advantage of it and kind of lose that edge? The collective stuff, what these schools were, these donors just give money and there's this huge pot of money. And then you pretty much go out and offer money to these 18-year-olds before they even step on college, before they actually really mature and understand what it is to be a professional, I think is a mistake. Now, I don't like it. I think when it comes to paying these guys, get you an agent and go out. And if there's a company that wants to sit down with you and talk about having a marketing deal, by all means, go for it. And that way, it just sets the tone of people are going to want to spend money on marketing with people when it comes to them being their brand ambassador if they perform well on the field. You're giving all these guys all this money without even in my opinion, earning it yet, just trying to get them to a campus. And I think it's putting a strain on college football. It's making recruiting very difficult. It's giving these guys a sense of entitlement. And it's just hard for me to wrap my mind around when I look at tape and you see these offensive linemen. Here, I'll show a couple clips, all right? Offensive linemen just getting beat. Offensive linemen that seem to not know what assignment they have going on. Offensive linemen who are your team captains and you know, big time guys coming in just looks like they don't even belong on the football field. And then you see that they're making six figures. <laughs> it's just a very interesting uh, landscape that college football has going on right now. And uh, I, I get it's early within this NIL era, but I can start to see the real impact and effects of it and what it's having on these players who are just not prepared to mentally handle everything that comes with being a professional. I've seen this at the professional level, and there's still guys there that don't know how to handle that and lax and get super comfortable. So hopefully something changes. Hopefully this committee starts seeing this. Is there a better way to do this? In my opinion, absolutely. And like I said, I'm all about these guys getting paid, but just the, the collective one is the part which I'm not the biggest fan of because you just go out and you're just pretty much treating this like a professional game. And it, I think it's not fair to the players. I think it's not fair to the fans. I think it's not fair to the programs. And uh, it's just completely changing the way uh, college football is going to be. And like I said, we're starting to see it. And now I get Arkansas is struggling, and I'm not going to blame all that on NIL at all. But it's not just uh, Arkansas that is starting to see the impact. You can see it happening all over. Uh, great examples. Some of the top teams in the country that are dishing out the highest paid NIL athletes, and they're losing. The LSU women's basketball team. Now we talked about how, you know, with the addition of all these top athletes, Angel Reese, one of the highest paid players in, in all of college sports when it comes to NIL deal, their first game of the year, they come out and lose. You know, you got all these players from Texas A&M. Can we get started with them? We remember a couple years back, the amount of money they spent on NIL, everyone just said, what is happening? They're going to have the best players in the country. And they got them to go. They had one of the best recruiting classes ever. They spent so much money in NIL. Or in the past, the best recruiting classes would typically lead to a very good football team. 
but you, you got guys in here and you give them all that money. And I'm telling you, I've been in these shoes before. As soon as you open that bank account, it changes a lot. The little things that these guys would do to try to get the competitive edge, there's a sense of comfortability and stability now putting them to kind of, I think in college football is one of the biggest times in a kid's life to get away from home, get away from a sense of security and develop into becoming a man or a woman. And uh, it's just the, the, the process that happens within those four years is so essential to that growth. And I, I just know going back to what I wanted to do as a football player was to provide a life for myself and my family after I left college. Um, and I remember I went to a Blockbuster. This one Blockbuster was a thing. I used to go there, rent movies. I wanted a Snicker bar. I uh, got the Snicker bar credit card decline. You know, and I was just like, oh, my goodness. I got to get back to the gym and work. That's not the case with these guys nowadays. It comes with that sense of entitlement, that sense of, you know, what can this program do for me and not what can I do for my program? I told you that comment that KJ made about Kenny Guyton and uh, it was in that post game against Florida. And when KJ said, he got up there and said, you know, I was real proud of Coach Guyton today. It came off as if, you know, KJ was given his approval of the offensive coordinator. And man, how, how have things changed? Back in my day, when you have guys, coordinators, coaches, you want to display and work so hard to get the approval and make them proud of your effort on the field and make the fans proud. But yeah, that has completely shifted. And so what's the key? I think Sam Pittman is starting to see this. He started to acknowledge issues with NIL, and that's going to be here regardless. Now the thing is to have coaches in this program who are going to have to now add a little bit more to their plate of managing that aspect, which they've never had to deal with before because it's really affecting their team. And so coaches just need to be aware. They need to adjust and they need to make sure they have guys in their program that, you know, understand the opportunities that they have. Guys in your program that once they get paid and they see that bank balance, you don't have to motivate them a little extra harder to get going, but they just see that as an opportunity and still want to be a better football player. And so those are the shifts in the program that I think Arkansas needs to start with. And I think the biggest thing a kind of, um, uh, what's the, what's the word? Um, what's the word? Oh man, the silver lining and that we are not going to a bowl game now is you're going to see the guys who actually really want to be there. You're playing essentially for nothing. Uh, but your pride and your character is going to be on full display. And, and I say that because when I was a sophomore, Petrino's first year, uh, we went into the last game of the year, not even if we won, it was only going to be a five win season and we weren't going to a bowl game. And even then there were people on that team that I will not name. I'm not going to throw anybody under the bus that were relieved. We weren't going to a bowl game and they were happy that that was going to be the last game of the season. Cause bowl practice is hard. You're on campus a whole month longer. You got practice every day full pads it's physical it's a lot it's sometimes some of the worst practice that there is and so i know some guys were probably very relieved at least i get to go home after that missouri game and you're going to see who those guys are because it's going to show up on tape and it's funny like when i played since we knew for sure we were going home those same guys were just like man we might as well play super hard this game because even if we win we get to go home after this and you end up beating lsu and little rock a team that you know, we shouldn't have beaten. So it's just amazing to me still some of the character uh, that is revealed in these games that seem like there's not a lot on the line. So hopefully the coaches are watching. Hopefully the fans are now watching. You'll see it. Trust me, it'll pop up. And um, in the future moving forward, you hope that this roster will reflect commitment, great character, and guys that no matter how much money they're making, Guys that no matter what situation they're in, they're going to show up and represent this program in state of Arkansas the way that it should. So a lot to get to, a lot to fix. Uh, I, I know you probably want more film breakdown. To be honest, 
I'm kind of getting tired of showing you the exact same thing week after week after week. It's nothing new. And so when we get to a point to where there's actually something to break down that you haven't seen before, I'll give you a little bit more of that. That being said, always appreciate y'all tuning in. Please share this. Please leave comments. Like I said, I need more content to actually get to. It's tough when you have a team putting on the same thing each and every week. So please have some comments. We'll answer some of those comments a little bit later next week. And um, we'd love for y'all to continue to be a part of this show. Like, share, subscribe. It really does help. You're watching 4th and 5.